one of the reasons people like us too is we don't treat it as a transactional relationship. You know, it really truly is a partnership of working with them and trying to help them grow as much as possible. Yes, we want the business. Yes, we make revenue off it, but we really want to be with the company for a long time and be that provider for them and help them achieve their business goals. Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Write For Me, where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Business Ninjas. I'm here today with Craig Brenner, Digital Marketing Manager of Complete Technology Services. How are you doing today, Craig? Uh, doing very well. Thanks for having me, Andrew. I appreciate it. Oh, uh, thanks for spending some time with us. appreciate it. Uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself and about Complete Technology Services. Uh, yeah, so I'll start with the latter Complete Technology Services. We're based out of Kansas City, Missouri. We're a full-service uh, IT company providing IT support for small and medium-sized businesses, really looking at companies that are needing to outsource or currently outsourcing their IT needs, uh, need help with whether it's help desk, cybersecurity, cloud management, backup data, recovery. We do pretty much everything when it comes to your IT services need. Uh, and I've been around since 2016. Uh, so coming up on what six years almost seven years in business and we have our main headquarters here in Kansas City Missouri and we uh, have an office in Omaha Nebraska as well so that we're in those two markets and uh, at some point in early uh, Q1 of 2023 we'll be serving uh, in Des Moines Iowa and St. Louis Missouri so that's pretty exciting so uh, for me yeah, I've been with the company since about April of 2022. I was newly created position to bring a lot of the marketing services in-house. Uh, they were uh, piecemealing together some outsourced uh, services and really wanted to bring someone in to kind of quarterback everything, coordinate between our external agency and also handle just pretty much all the internal actual communications and marketing initiatives for the company. So uh, that's where I come in. I kind of have a little bit of a knack for coming into newly created positions. Uh, my last few marketing positions I've had um, within the private sector have been newly created positions. And even when I was in the public sector working for a local municipality, it was a newly created position in the communications department. So uh, kind of my little bit of my expertise, which I enjoy doing. It's a lot of fun to be able to come into a place um, where usually there's a lot of buy-in on the importance of marketing, which is always key. And that was key for this position for me to accept it. Um, and a chance really lay the foundation, uh, putting a lot of the groundwork uh, and, you know, create things that are going to be successful down the road. I kind of know all the little tips and tricks on how to, you know, get things up and running. Well, I'm glad to be spending some time with a trailblazer as it <laughs> were. Um, tell me, wh what verticals do your company service? Uh, pretty much all of them. There's only a few that we, you know, kind of avoid. And I don't say necessarily say avoid. It's just that we haven't had a chance to really get in those markets yet. Those verticals would be probably education uh, and banking. Finance is kind of one that we have a few clients in there, but it's not uh, an area that we are super uh, deep in. But yeah, we can do pretty much any vertical, whether it's, you know, uh, insurance, manufacturing, medical, um, law offices. That's a big one we have. And we have quite a few nonprofit clients, too, which is something Personally, I'm kind of proud of. I like the fact that we work with a lot of nonprofits. The the building that we're in, uh, we share with a nonprofit, and we've recently brought them on to be one of our clients. So I just really enjoy being a part of that uh, of a company that really wants to work in that in that atmosphere and, and in that space. So it's definitely one I enjoy. Excellent. Um, of all those kind of companies, is there any particular type that you work best with? Uh, it's not really dependent on the vertical, honestly. It's more what they're looking to do. Um, we have some larger clients. Usually, like I mentioned earlier, our kind of bread and butter, where maybe 80 to 85 percent of our, uh, you know, revenue and clients are, is that medium to small size businesses. You know, 20 to 100 employees um, are kind of what, you know, our sweet spot, 50 mile radius of where our office is or where we're, what market we're in. Uh, so that's really kind of what we do, what we look for. But we also can do co-manage environments too. So working with companies with 100 plus employees that maybe already have an internal resource and we help just co-manage. I actually was working on a case study recently for, uh, it was about one of our areas of expertise, which is, you know, shifting from having an internal resource to outsourcing. And this started out as a co-managed um, a co-managed relationship with this company because they were a bigger company, had an internal resource. We started co-managing relationship with them. And then their internal resource literally walked off off on the job. Middle of the day, their internal IT person just up and left. So that's where we had to step in. And we were able, because of the groundwork we had done, the relationship we had built and the trust, uh, we actually took over all their IT services and ticketing system. And it took a more than 30 days before any internal employee noticed that the internal IT resource had left. So that's how seamless we were able to make it where not even people who deal with this you know, person 
you know, on a daily basis, whether it's emailing tickets to them. Uh, they didn't notice that there wasn't anyone there anymore because of how well we were able to take over that. And this is also a company too that has offices overseas. So we started managing that relationship with their overseas offices. So, you know, we kind of say we can pretty much do anything and everything when it comes to the IT stuff, uh, for sure. It's like I said, it's a great opportunity for us to kind of learn uh, what we can and can't do and really help um, you know, the client in the best way possible. We have these three uniques we talk about. And one of them that I think kind of fits us perfectly is tailored solutions. Uh, when mm -hmm. I was sitting down with my sales team and talking to them about like their last five wins and last five losses, it seems like the common thread for our fast last five wins has been uh, really the relationships and, and how we can tailor our solutions to what they need, whether they're growing, whether they've lost an internal resource or looking to save money, if they had a ransomware attack, any kind of stuff like that, we really are able to, you know, fit what we do to what their needs are. Hey, at the end of the day, all businesses are populated by human beings, and it's all about relationships that have to have life to them. You know, you're talking about them barely noticing an internal employee being gone. It, it exposes an interesting loophole to this remote working time that we're in, which is People might not necessarily notice when there's a change of personnel at a company, unless the fact that they're not in a particular meeting on a regular basis, the company can sort of delay that information more than ever before, because you're not walking in the office and seeing an empty desk over there or somebody carrying boxes out. It's just something that might be going on behind the surface. And a company like yours can come in and save the day. Yeah, because we're able to, you know, offer a lot of different resources, whether it's, you know, part of the different agreements we have is where you get certain bucket of hours, you can have on site people, um, off site material, uh, remote desktop engineers and stuff like that. Uh, so it really is nice. Me personally, I'm one of those people like I enjoy coming to the office. Uh, I was one of the people I had to do the remote work during the pandemic, but I definitely flourish more just my style. And I think for the type of work I do, it's important for me to kind of be a little more uh, ingrained in what's going on. And I'm just I'm someone who just enjoys being around the people. But yeah, with especially with the more prevalent world of remote work, having strong IT support uh, is definitely, I think, even more key during October Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And some of the different, you know, cybersecurity tips we were putting out there on our social media accounts, what, uh, some of them were would be kind of simple, but it makes sense. Like, you know, if you're working remotely at a coffee shop, you know, you have to worry about what uh, unsecured network you're on making sure to use a VPN, making sure to do little things uh, like lock your computer every time we leave. We kind of do something here where our uh, systems operations side will sometimes try to uh, put it on some like bait to see if employees take it and see if we're actually following what we tell our uh, clients to do, you know, locking your computer each time. Uh, someone left, I'm pretty sure it's one of our systems engineer people, left a flash drive just sitting out on one of the desks to see if anyone would take it and plug it in their computer. You know, like stuff that we tell our clients, hey, don't ever do this. Don't ever plug a personal storage device into a work computer, things like that. So it's kind of interesting how like I've kind of got on my sales team around me about how, you know, making sure to do this kind of stuff. And it was funny listening to two of my sales people argue or talk about like, is that your flash drive or is that mine? I don't know. I don't want to touch it because what if it's a test? I'm like, that's smart. Oh, like I kind of joke. I was like, hey, do you see our social media post? It tells you not to do this. So let's make sure that we're, you know, practicing what we preach to our clients. Well, good for you. Hey, that's, it's all important stuff in, in yeah. this day and age. Cybersecurity mm -hmm. is no laughing matter. What What's the origin story of Complete Technology Services? Uh, so our uh, president and founder, uh, Brett Knighton, he's a Kansas City guy through and through, an entrepreneur by trade. Uh, he had had another company that he had started, um, which was kind of a similar model to an outsourced for legal services and decided he you know, liked the IT space, liked what uh, managed service providers was able to do, felt like there was a chance to be different in this area uh, and especially in this market and decided to go out and start this company. And I'm glad he did. He's very uh, approachable, very smart. He's one of those business leaders that understands how to hire good people and let them do the work, um, which is very nice. You know, we kind of always talk about, it, especially with our senior leadership team, uh, there's kind of a mantra to manage yourself out of a job, you know, hire good people around you, let them do the work which is very nice. And we do this thing, we call them, uh, we have these level 10 meetings as part of our EOS meeting system. Uh, but every quarter we've started doing, or I should say Brett has started doing where he has one called a skip level 10, where he literally just has, you know, donuts in a, in a conference room, brings in a cross section of people from the admin side, from the system operations side, and just gives like an update on the company and then takes questions, asks them, hey, what do you feel like's working? What do you feel like's not working? And, the, and that kind of starts with him down the way the leadership is here, being very open, uh, communicative, uh, approachable, but also holding people accountable um, and just really doing a good job of evaluating not only the person that we have in that seat and what the seat means, but also evaluating themselves. So it's, it's a really good kind of culture. And I've told them like, 
I've been at places that try to claim like they have a good culture or what they want to do, but he's done stuff that really kind of backs it up. Um, even the little things like during the summer when gas prices were really high, he gave every employee a, a gas card for a gas station, a hundred dollar gas card said, hey, fill up a couple of times on us. We know gas prices are high. We cater lunch once a week for employees, uh, do a lot of different stuff like that. So, you know, with him starting this company, it's just been a really great to see it grow, especially how much they've grown within the last couple of years, pretty much doubled in size from 2020 to where we are now. Well, that, that leads into what was going to be my next, next question was what sort of both challenges and opportunities did COVID provide for your company in terms of its ability to, to you know, to change with the times and to grow? Yeah, I think it definitely forced them to grow or understand how to do things for a company in that with that size. Because when the company first started, it was you know four to six people in a small office building. Uh, and so you could easily just yell in the hallway if you wanted to change the process or procedure of how we're doing things now, trying to get a lot more um, uniform and streamlined is great. We always have a phrase around here where it's like, you know, document everything you do. You know, I have a marketing process that I'm constantly updating. So if I get hit by a train or win the lottery, someone else can come in behind me and see what I was doing. So doing stuff like that. And also they understand like what they're doing now for, an, for a company of 42 ish employees, they're going to have to change it in a couple of years when they get to be a bigger company. So, you know, it has kind of forced them to understanding and grow a bit quicker, but I do love the leadership team here and what they do as far as uh, thinking ahead for those kind of things and being very open uh, with what they're trying to do and taking input back to is something that's big. They're very big on, you know, we'll try something, let's at least try it. If it's not working, not being afraid to scrap the plan. Um, Cause I think that's something that I've been at companies before or, or just people in general, I've suffered from it where this is my idea, this is my plan and I'm not gonna admit failure. You know, at some point you just need to kind of cut your losses uh, and try something different. Excellent. Hey, I, I feel fortunate to, to work at a company with a similar top-down great culture. Our CEO is just a salt of the earth guy and it all comes from him and uh, everybody loves coming to work. Um, yeah. You know, it, it, it helps. You can have policy and process on paper, but if there's no human component that's really open to change, it just doesn't work. And, yeah. and in this marketplace when, you know, things like, oh, the whole world is going to shut down tomorrow, go. You know, you have to be able to change. Yeah, and just the flexibility that they give you here too. I was talking to our uh, business office manager and her and I were talking about working at places that don't give you the flexibility if you have to go pick up your kid early from school or kids sick and you can remote work that day. Just the flexibility here. And there was one time my de- I was sitting at my desk and our president, you know, Brett Knighton came by and we were kind of chatting. And, and I said, to him, I was like, oh, I don't ever get nervous when you come by my desk. He's like, I would hope not. I don't want people to feel nervous because the boss is walking around. Uh, and we never felt like that. His door is almost always open. He's in the office pretty much five days a week. Uh, and he's just very approachable, easy to talk to. Um, treats pretty much everyone the same, too. So it, it's been very nice working at a place like that. I mean, I, it's been many, many years since I've been as happy at a job as I am here, to say the least. Oh, great. Congratulations. What, what, what makes your company stand out from the competition? You know, it's it's funny. It's something I've been talking a lot with some of my coworkers about um, because we're trying to make sure our marketing reflects the type of product we have. Because I definitely feel like the analogy we keep using is, you know, we need to make sure to kind of market ourselves as what we are, which is probably to use a car analogy, a Lexus. You know, like we are a top of the line, top shelf um, service provider, as opposed to being one that's you know fine and you know like a Toyota or whatever. Those are nice, but we really feel like what sets us apart is the care that we take with our clients and relationships we build. Not only do we provide top-notch service from our, you know, ability with our service desk, you know, engineers and service desk team and how great they are at handling tickets, handling crises um, from our leadership and everyone, but we really feel like with focusing on the uniques of what we do and what our core values are too, you know, we really look at trying to hire the right people and evaluate people too. We're constantly evaluating people if they're not only the right right fit for the seat we always say but also making sure the seat makes sense um you know making sure that the goals for that position make sense to the company and the overall health of the company but also make sure we have the right person in that if they're not you know maybe tweaking it a little bit or finding somewhere else that fits better for them so we feel like we do a good job of putting the right people in place for what we do and then we feel like our service that we provide is definitely top notch and i think it's more from I can sit here and say, oh, sales and marketing is what makes us really great. And of course, I'm going to think that and say that because that's the department I'm in. But I really think we have a great service department team. And that's kind of what sets us apart. You know, we have our core values, you know, problem solving, get it done attitude, being client focused. And that really permeates throughout our entire team. I get the, you know, uh, report about how many service tickets we get per week and what our percentage ranking is 
as far as how many we get for good, neutral, bad. And we have more weeks where we're in the high 90s than we do in the low 90s. So that's really great. Nicely done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Funny part about your analogy is that Toyota owns Lexus, so that whether yeah. you buy a Corolla or a hundred thousand dollar car, they're going to get your oh, yeah. money one way or the other. Oh yeah, it's just not that a bad business model, right? Yeah, yeah, it's that perception <laughs> kind of thing too. And so it's something that you know I struggle with from marketing with coming to a B two B field for the first time. Is you know how do you set yourself apart? You know that's something as I continue to evaluate our marketing and our website and changes we want to make to it. I'm very cognizant of how do you set yourself apart because there are other MSPs out there. We know that some of the great people we have here were originally with some of our competitors but it's how do you stand out um and it's really just being the service you're able to provide them like i said earlier i mentioned those talking to my sales team about our last five wins and fast last five losses and really that common thread you know the last five wins being the relationships we're able to build and, and being able to offer pretty much a lot of everything i've heard a lot in our transition meetings we do from sales to our support team that one of the reasons people like us too is we don't treat it as a transactional relationship you know, it really truly is a partnership of working with them and trying to help them grow as much as possible. Yes, we want the business. Yes, we make revenue off it. But we really want to be with the company for a long time and be that provider for them and help them achieve their business goals. We've uh, even streamlined our process, or I should say become more efficient with our process for our uh, business reviews that we do with them, with our clients to go over, hey, here's some areas that you're weak in. Maybe we need to look at putting together a project agenda for how we're going to address these old servers or how we're going to replace this or deal with that kind of stuff, just so we can make sure that the client's prepared to, and there's no surprises for them and being as upfront as possible and trying to make sure that we're all on the same page. And we're, like I said earlier, constantly evaluating our process of how to improve and become more efficient, really at, at the end of it, to be um, a better partner to our clients. Excellent. Hey, those are good mantras that have. I, my personal opinion is always you take care of the relationship and the goals and the financial end will take care of itself. If the almighty dollar is what's in the middle of your bullseye, a lot of other things fall by the wayside. And that, that that's the important stuff, the, the relationship and the, and the trust involved. What sort of value has content marketing played in the growth of your business? Uh, it's played a little bit. I think it's definitely going to get better. We're, we're getting ready to revamp a lot of our content on our website um, and, and you know go to a little bit more to kind of get a little inside baseball, uh, you know, topic clusters and things like that, because that is one area when I came in looking at our website of really an area that we need to improve on. We're getting some people to our website, but we're not getting those conversions. So. I'm, a, I'm very kind of not always linear, but I'm kind of trying to look at what the problem is. You know, if people are clicking on our Google ads and going to our website, but not converting, taking the steps to get there, then clearly something's wrong with our website and trying to revamp it. Um, it's kind of funny. My first couple of weeks in, I met with my direct boss, who's our VP of sales and the president of our company, Brett, who I mentioned earlier, and they wanted my feedback on the website. And I kind of felt bad because I was kind of ripping into it for like five or 10 minutes. And like, I was like, I feel bad to just rip into your guys' website. They're like, hey, hey, Craig, it's not it's not our website. It's all of ours website now. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I do remember that. And so, yeah, that's kind of been the fun part, though, is being able to get the chance to really look at our content, look what we're doing and making sure it's all aligned. You know, with a former agency we were partnered with, uh, some of the content I felt like was never, there was never aligned across what we we're doing as far as, you know, making sure we are focusing on these keywords that they were, you know, sprinkled throughout our website, our blog content, our social media content and things like that. So just trying to get more um, content across the board and consistent. That was something in one of our uh, quarterly meetings I have with the sales team where we talked about making sure that we're all talking about our product the same way, you know, making sure that the analogies or uh, the type of services that we do that our SDRs are mentioning on the calls are the same ones that our sales executives are making in discovery meetings or our sales engineer and our assessment phases or proposals, things like that. So it's very much you know, trying to make sure that all the content makes sense um, and in that it's re relevant and relative to what people want. You know, we really speak to that um, ideal customer profile being those you know, C-suite people. So we want to make sure to make content that's relevant to them, um, that speaks to them, but is not overly complex, but not speaking down to them because, you know, they are business owners. They know what they're doing. They're in the C-suite for a reason. So really evaluating all the content there. And one of the good things we have here is a pretty strong team with a lot of experience um, in the IT field from other places and, and just from being here. So I rely on them quite a bit of when I go through topics of like, hey, does this make sense? What are you hearing? What are some of the reasons people would switch to us? What are some of the reasons they have? So I can work that into the content and uh, really make sure that's kind of catching people's eye. You are speaking my language as far <laughs> as content is concerned. Raw clicks are interesting on a dashboard, but they mean nothing. Yes. You, know, you got you to gotta engage and educate people at your site to carry them from the beginning to the end. Raw mm -hmm. clicks mean nothing.
Exactly. Uh, what, what's something you'd like to be celebrating personally or professionally a year from now? Professionally would probably see us um, being successful in those two additional markets we're going into. We have a pretty um, good plan of what we want to do as far as for 2023 and then even on to 2025 as far as what markets want to be. And so I'd love to see us be able to close some deals in Des Moines and St. Louis. That's probably the big thing I'd like to see us be able to do and see just some, um, and this is going to happen probably more at the end of Q1, but seeing our content really uh, increase and, and the overall layout of our website. You know, like I mentioned earlier, we're in Omaha and we have a few clients in there now. So we've started to make some headway there. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what our sales team can do once we actually finally start selling in Des Moines, selling in St. Louis and are actively there. And so that's uh, that's definitely exciting and something I want to be celebrating to seeing the success we've been able to have in those markets for sure. Excellent. Well, I wish you all the best with all of that. Please tell everyone what's your URL, how can they find you and what social media channels do you use? Yeah, uh, completetechnology.com. Uh, it's our website. Oh, for a while there, we had a different URL because uh, like I said, we're very much a hub and spoke model with Kansas City being the head. So we had Kansas City on there, but now completetechnology.com gets you right to our website. Uh, and yeah, you can find us on what we on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn are the main ones that we're on. So yeah, I try to put a lot of content on there, especially I mean, I'm the one that handles all the content on there. So we're usually posting a couple of times a week on each platform uh, for sure. And really just trying to get our information out there to let people know what's going on. And yeah, it's pretty fun. Excellent. Craig Brenner of Complete Technology Services. Appreciate you spending some time today. All the best to you and yours for a happy, healthy new year. And thanks for spending some time with Business Ninjas. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm.